Agusin er kusan ola sharehe shahu kaiti kahir kaint er konsi yik yik nidradi as we go on our little path of knowledge this is talk number 4 and it's all about perceptions Devo Mahagas Father over East, Agus Lanamid English and Cosancha, a time he did by the Wallace. Agus and Rudhar Shulling of Nagirig Termoyacht, uh, all the Mabegir and Dol Dumsagus, Dutch. We were trying to develop uh, a little vocabulary of terminology that it means the same to me and you as we go along this path later on. So, um, we already spoke about how culture functions in our daily lives. In other words, when we make subconscious or sudden decisions, they're coloured completely by the culture we're reared in, and that is in our background. Um, and we spoke about kind of some of the main traits or, or fundamentals in Irish indigenous culture, one of them being that you always tie the root to everything in genealogy, or who wrote this song, or where did that story come from, or who was the poet in this piece, so that you can gauge the authenticity of the piece itself and the strength of the information. In written culture, uh, you can always go back and look at the sources and compare different sources and so on, but in, in oral culture or oral culture, you can't do that because obviously, after a generation, the source is gone, dead, disappeared into the tin ether. So there is an imperative to be always accurate and tell the truth in that way. And we spoke how uh, culture uh, in the Irish indigenous mold is local. In other words, it evolved where the family lived or the Tuba, four generations at least, in one area, and everything came to them. They were not centralised. In other words, law, medicine, poetry, um, everything came to them as a community. They never went to court, went to the city, went anywhere. And therefore, there were fundamentals attached to that. Every area uh, evolved w using the, re the resources of that area, and that coloured their culture. And also, there was always an interest in something strange or new. So if somebody from a different race arrived into an area, it would be a cause of celebration because there'd be new stories, completely new experiences and so on, which was not the norm. So that was uh, another thing we discussed. So that led to local dialects in language, music and so on. Um, and what I want to talk about today is perception how perceptions um, are kind of something we don't think about. So when we listen to the news or we come into a situation or a group of people, we see things according to the language you already have. For example, can you imagine if you were somebody who never saw a bicycle or a cart or anything like that, something wheeled, and you're coming along to describe to your neighbour that when you, after seeing the bicycle, you'd be trying to describe what you saw. Now you'd say, there was this animal and a two, two roundy legs in it, very thin, and a very short little bit of a tail at the back right, but it had two big horns in the front. And you get up on its back and you kind of paddle your feet and it goes hell for leather. I don't think it can back or reverse. That's the way you'd be describing it. But then you come along and uh, a couple of thousand years later, somebody invented the wheel and you'd be saying, well, there was this strange contraption um, this cat with only two wheels on it, but the two wheels are not side by side, they're one in front of the other. And there's a narrow stick between the two. And you get up on its back on the, the ridge of it, and you pedal, hell for leather, and something turns the wheels. There must be sky hooks or something attached to it to keep it standing straight. It doesn't fall over. Because, you see, you didn't have the terminology to describe chains and wheels and balance and all that stuff. So your perception was coming from a different place. So, for example, we come to music. If in 1792, when Bunting was above in Belfast at the famous convention to gather the last dregs of the Irish harp culture and tradition, there was 12 harpers there. There was, I think, 18, 17 or 18 left alive in the country at the time. Um, and uh, Bunting collected from the 12 above. Now, he was a brilliant man, great man. But the only tools he had 
were those of Western music, so staff notation, pen and quill, a quill and ink, and uh, the scales or modes as they were known in European civilization, tones and half tones or semitones. So he could only write down what he what with using the tools he had. He had never seen or heard what we call chano, so he could not transcribe that because he didn't have the tools for it. He had to put things within the five lines or bar lines of notation, and he had to put bar lines in certain places where he felt the beat or the rhythm was falling. So anything outside of that he couldn't put in. Brilliant and all as he was. And we have the same thing even continuing all the generations to today. When you go to university today, and they teach you using the language of Western civilization. So all your concepts and all your visualization and all your oral visualization, if you like, all your, is all governed by that. So that's your perception of it, your, your background. In the same way, when you are listening to somebody singing in Western civilization terms, your perceptions are that there is do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. And there might be what they call the modes, which means that it's kind of what they call sad sounding. Do, re, mi, but mi is flat, so it's uh, minor, as they call it in classical terms. So you'd have that, all you can hear is those intervals. You can only hear the difference between do and re, or re and mi, or mi and fa, which is half a tone. So all you can hear is tones and half tones. Anything else sounds kind of slightly out of tune. That's your perception. Whereas if you're in India, you have the tone that's tone right into thirds, and we call them srutis. And your hearing has to be a little bit sharper. Now we have the same thing in Irish music, and that's the subject of the next talk, is the whole question of tone and pitch and how we hear sound. But what I'm saying today is that the perception ex extends into all our or um, senses. So perception, when you see an account of something uh, that happens, uh, the account would be coloured by the perception of the person writing it. And if they're from different cultures, the, the, the accounts will vary greatly. Now obviously there will be political influences if you're from the right or the left or the black or the white or the pink and the yellow or whatever it is. You'll, you'll have different perceptions uh, because you'll, you'll be, you'll be uh, lying with or emphasising your own view of the reality of the world. So for example when we'd say in North America in the 200 years ago when the native people were, were there, their culture was very different and their perception of life was very different and they had a different attitude towards um, the importance of things. So nature for them was something that they were very involved in a close uh, knit relationship. Whereas in the Western approach towards them, nature was something to be conquered or uh, got over uh, uh, and everything, including the, the other people on the opposing side, were things to be controlled and, and conquered. So some people worked in a very short time period, as in, let's get it done now and we'll conquer them and we'll run the space whereas other people would look over the space of generations because time is not just one lifetime. They live, you live on through your children and through your grandparents backwards. So there's a different perception in what, what is a, 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 the life of any given thing or idea or subject. So perceptions can vary greatly. And if we loosen the tie we have on our own perceptions and saying this is the rigid way that the world is, and put ourselves in the shoes of somebody else's perceptions of the very same thing, we learn an awful lot. Now, when we just travel along this path, we'll need to shift our perceptions quite a bit to be able to see something from various different sides and angles or hear something from various different sides and angles. So, schnell an heinte hagum in oven tacht, a tabunt le kunse vasentu rodi, agus kadesintu idrialu idrodavanis rodele. That is the talk for today how perceptions change and how we need to learn to be able to step out of our own perception of something and into another's perception of the same thing to see the subject in greater detail. Grumagav, Nadin Darud, ma smalevesha, turn thumbs up them, no din subscribing. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. 
And remember, I am very grateful to my patron supporters. There's always room for more. Uh, Gurumiri Mahabhav.